Welcome once again to the vlog vlog. I'm your host. Today, I'll be taking a look at T-Mobile Home Internet after my first three months with the service. I pay $50 a month with auto pay. Best of all, there's no data caps and no contracts. One thing to note is that I'm using the 4G LTE version of the product and I think they've raised the price to $60 for the new 5G model. I live in a rural area, and this service has been a bit of a game changer for me, and it's also much better than what I've had to deal with over the years. And I think it's important to compare where I'm coming from. The service that I've had for many, many years is called Viasat. They're a satellite internet service provider, and for the longest time, they were my only option outside of dial-up. Over the years, they've gotten a lot better, but it wasn't great, and it was extremely expensive. I was paying $160.90 per month, or $1,930.92 per year. It also required a two-year contract. They had advertised speeds of 30 megabytes per second, but my monthly data cap was only 100 gigabytes. Online gaming was also a non-starter due to the extremely high ping. It was perfectly fine for web browsing, and I could stream some videos. However, after 100 gigabytes, the speeds would slow to a crawl. I then switched to a Sprint hotspot, and it was actually a lot better. I only paid $60 a month, but I had to pay $600 for the device. I had a hard data cap of 100 gigabytes, but I supplemented it with a 50 gigabyte hotspot on my phone. I'd also use my phone to mirror to my Apple TV for streaming video, which didn't count against my data cap. It had a moderate ping, which allowed for some very light gaming. However, I was very reliant on physical media, so a service like Xbox Game Pass was pretty much a non-starter due to the strict data cap. It also made the Xbox Series X pretty much useless, since everything had to be downloaded, even the physical games. The service was okay, but it wasn't great. It was better than Viasat at a cheaper price, but the service was still pretty spotty at times. I also want to talk about Starlink. I was planning on getting it to replace the hotspot, but it's not coming to my area until at least late 2021 or early 2022. The cost is $100 a month, which is a lot better than Viasat, but it requires you to pay $500 for the equipment. They promise low pings and no data caps, which should be good for competitive gaming. So to me, this seemed like a perfect option. Now, when T-Mobile came to my area, it was pretty much a no-brainer for me to pick it up because it was cheaper than the Sprint hotspot I was using, but mainly because it had no data cap. And without a contract, I could also cancel it whenever Starlink became available. However, it required me to change my service from Sprint to T-Mobile, which was a major pain but it was totally worth it. It took me a few hours to go through the whole process of getting everything ready for the switch, and I had to wait until the next day to actually switch my services. Once I switched, I was without internet for a couple of weeks while I waited for my new device. With T-Mobile Home Internet, I'm paying $50 a month with auto pay, it has, again, no contracts, so you don't have to pay for the equipment and there's no data cap. The ping is okay, which means I can play online games. It also means that I can do things like use a service like Xbox Game Pass and download all of the games that I want. 
My experience with the service has been fairly good to so far. It's just so much better than what I've ever had. My first month I used 466 gigabytes. My second I used 756. And for my third I used 586 with no signs of throttling. Was fairly easy. There's a phone app that you have to install. It's all very easy to do, so you just plug the modem into the wall and find a good spot in your home. I don't have the greatest connection to their network, but it hopefully should get better with time. I typically get two bars with my phone inside my house, and I'm usually between two and three bars with the modem depending on the day. The device also has a battery, which will allow you to use it if your house loses power, which is a really nice addition. I now have a bunch of smart stuff in my home like thermostats, an alarm system, security cameras, and a smart garage door, and they all work flawlessly with it. I can also stream video in HD, but not 4K. I can play online games and upload videos to YouTube. However, it's not an ideal situation for competitive online gamers and game services like Stadia simply isn't going to work. My ping is fine for me, but it's not great by most people's standards. It's also not an ideal situation for YouTubers because while I can upload videos to YouTube, it takes a really long time and it really bogs down my entire network. When downloading or uploading files, my ping takes a huge hit. So I could still watch HD video and download a game at the same time, but I can't really download a game and play an online game at the same time. It also has trouble with live video when I'm downloading or uploading large files. I think people may have similar issues if they have a large household, but it works fine for me. The service is also very dependent on how close you are to the tower and your mileage may vary. If I were closer to the tower, my service would be better, but I don't think it would work very well at all if I was any further away. I think this is a great device for people who have limited options when it comes to connecting to the internet, and I think this could be a very good device who primarily use streaming services like Disney Plus or HBO Max. My original plan was to use T-Mobile Home Internet as a bit of a stopgap for when I can get Starlink. But my experience has been so good that I think I'll probably just wait and see how Starlink does with more people on their network. As it is now, I'm perfectly happy paying half the monthly cost of Starlink and not having to pay an additional $500 for equipment. As previously stated, I'm only using the 4G LTE version and not the new 5G version of the remote. Once they upgrade the towers near me and whenever I'm able to get their new modem, I'm hopeful that my service will just keep getting better and better with time. I want to thank you for watching my review, and I want to remind you that this was not an endorsement of the aforementioned product. These are just my thoughts and opinions that I've had with the service, and your experience may differ. I also want to ask you not to subscribe to this channel. If a million of you subscribe, then the Florida Panthers might win the Stanley Cup, and I just don't know how I feel about that. I'm just a guy learning how to make videos on his Macintosh, so let's just not risk it. Thank you again, and I hope you have a wonderful day.